What is going on guys? Zuggy Fishing here. Back to you with another video. Guys, I hope y'all are well. Hope you're living life positively. Guys, today we have a very special video for y'all. I'm going to be going over everything I know about frog fishing. Frog fishing 101. Guys, I'm going to be teaching about the favorite types of frogs I like to use, brands, when to fish frogs, how to fish frogs, structure, all of the above. Frog fishing 101 coming your way. Also, guys, before the video starts, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Zuggy Fishing. And guys, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment down below. I appreciate it, guys. We're almost at 6,000 subscribers. That would be so, so cool. All right, guys, let's get right into the video. All right, guys, so for the first thing I'm going to be going over, you know, what are my favorite types of brands and what types of frogs do I mainly like to use? All right, so my first favorite brand, and all these brands I'm going to say are in no particular order, but the first brand I'm going to be going over are Guggen Baits. These are the Guggen Squad Filthy Frogs. I have three colors right here. I have the white Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. I have the Ghost Gill color Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. And then I have the overall straight black Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. The reason why I like these frogs is because of these legs. These legs are already pre-cut. And when I say pre-cut, I mean they're sized to the perfect lengths so that you can have the maximum hookup ratio when you're fishing. These legs on these frogs will come extremely long and that actually will end up in less hookups because if these legs are getting in the way of the bass blowing up on it, it's less of a chance the bass will overall grab that frog and take it down and allow these hooks to go in when you set the hook. A good key tip in order to know how long the legs should be, you want to take the legs of these frogs and kind of pinch them down just like that and then wrap them over the head of the frog. And whatever is excess over the head of the frog, you just want to take some scissors and chop those off. These Guggen Squad Filthy Frogs are perfect. They line up exactly to the head and you really don't have to cut off anything. Guys, another quick tip about frog fishing, you want to use white when it's cloudy and black when it's sunny. These are the overall patterns that I've seen in other fishermen that I've seen works for them as well. Very, very good stuff for frogs, black and sunny and white and cloudy. These Guggen Squad Filthy Frogs are literally, there's nothing to complain about. They're designed really, really well. And I like the utilize how they utilize to cut the legs already pre-cut so it's perfect and ready to go. Um, it's durable. When you press down on the head of the frog, these hooks come right out ready to set the hook on that bass. So when that bass attacks it, these this frog will go down like that. And these when you set the hook, these hooks go right into the bass's mouth. Guys, again, another big tip when you're frog fishing and what I like about these uh, filthy frogs by Guggen Baits, the bellies of the frog. These, this ghost skill belly has a glitter bottom, very significant, very attractive to the fro uh, to the bass. And then again, with the black frog, the black belly, good for sunny days, and the white frog with the white belly, good for cloudy days. I highly recommend the Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. The next type of frog brand I like to use is Sabeel, specifically the Sabeel Pivot Frog. I have three Sabeel Pivot Frogs right here that I want to show you guys. I got the green color, I have the orange color, and then I have the black color right here. The first thing I like to point out about the Sabeel uh, Pivot Frog is that these legs are already pre-cut. As I said before with the Guggen Squad Filthy Frog, essential, it's ready to go, don't have to cut it back. Really good ratio for those hooks that when those legs are cut to the right size. Another thing I like about these Sabeel Pivot Frogs is this hook. If you guys could see this pretty well, I'm going to show you the bottom of the frog right here. There is a weighted Texas rig hook right here. Eighth ounce weight on the bottom of these frogs. It's a really different kind of presentation. You know, many frogs are not made with. The Sabeel Pivot Frog, really, really cool, versatile. It has this five aught. Texas rig hook on the bottom of it. It's got it on all of them in the eighth ounce weight. Very significant for getting that frog out, covering more water, but it also has this big hook. And look at this right here. Guys, when you, when this bass blows up on this frog, it'll be like this. This frog will be on the top of the hook, just like that. When this bass blows up on the frog, this frog will go down and look how much hook coverage there is right there. Look how much. There's almost an inch of hook coverage right there. It's literally a guaranteed hookup if the bass grabs this entire thing. I mean, even if it nips the back of it, this frog goes down, you have tons and tons of hook coverage right here. Um, again, 
a, a, a kind of a negative, you know, I don't like about the frogs is some of these frogs, you know, kind of just have the white classic bottom. I like a frog with a flashy, colorful bottom. That's what attracts bass. It's the movement. I like this orange frog. It has the orange bottom. This black one, though, kind of has the classic white, a little bit of yellow here and there. And same with this green one. But this frog, very versatile, allows you to get that bait out there farther, cover lots and lots of water. And the action is very good on this frog as well. You may not think it is because of this weighted hook, but it is very, very, very good. The Sabeel Pivot Frog, highly recommended. The next frog brand I want to cover are the Booyah Frogs. These are the Booyah Pad Crashers. By far one of my favorite frogs. I use it often too. They have tons and tons of different styles of frogs as well, including popping frogs and just normal pad crashers. They also have different frogs like this frog, with the little propeller on the back, kind of like a whopper plopper, which I love. But we're gonna be talking about the Booyah Pad Crashers right here. These are the Booyah Pad Crasher Juniors, which are my favorite types of frog. And the way you wanna know, you know, when you wanna pick up a junior frog versus a bigger style frog is when you wanna match the hatch. If you ever go to a pond and you see frogs all around it, you wanna look at the size of these frogs. If they're big bullfrogs, you know, you wanna get something like the Sabeel Pivot Frog or the Guggen Squad Filthy Frog. But you know, if you see little toads, little guys hopping around here and there, I go with the Booyah Pad Crasher Junior. What I love about the Booyah Pad Crasher Junior, not only can you get these baits out far, even though you may not think you can, these baits, it, the plastic that these things are made with, people don't really think about these things when they're buying frogs, but I do. Look at this plastic. This plastic is extremely, extremely soft. Look at this thing. If you push down on that, that's immediate. That's immediate. It's almost sponge-like. But, uh, but on the other hand, like these Guggen Squad Filthy Frogs, they still do go down. But, you know, it's tougher plastic. They're kind of more durable, you know, and that could be a disadvantage when bass fishing. But again, when this bass blows up in this frog, you want to have that soft point. So just like that, it blows up on it and then boom, just like that, hooks are ready to go, ready for the hook set. Now, a disadvantage with these frogs, not really a disadvantage because it's easily fixable, but these legs, I cut these legs already, but these legs come extremely, extremely long. What I did, I pinched the ends of these frogs, wrapped it around the head of the frog, and then there's a bunch of legs dangling here and I chopped them off just like that. And that's what you want to do. The Booyah Pad Crasher Jr. I have in the green color. Again, belly. That's what you want. Colorful, colorful bellies attracting bass. And then the black color um, with the white with the, with the yellow belly as well. Going off of Booyah again, I, right here I have the Booyah Poppin' Frog. Guys, Poppin' frogs are some of my favorite frogs to throw. Uh, aside from, you know, these rounded, normal-looking hollow bodies, the poppin' frog. Phenomenal, phenomenal frog. Um, it's kind of a mix between a frog and a popper. So basically, when you pop this frog, it's kind of like a popper. The span of water will come over it just like a popper, as I said before. But uh, again, another thing with these booyah frogs, these logs, uh, legs become extremely long when you first get it. So what you want to do, wrap it around, bring it to the head, and you want to cut off this excess. There's still a little excess I have to cut off for this one. But the booyah popping frog, again, as I said before, the plastic on these things are phenomenal. I've always loved this about the Guggen Squad. Uh, the booyah popping frog, this plastic goes right there. Hooks are ready to go. The next frog I want to view, review is the frog by Z-Man. Z-Man, mainly known for their soft plastics, their Ned Rigs, you know, but they also have frogs and they're very good. This is the Z-Man popping frog right here. Again, has that cut mouth. So when you pop the frog, the span of water will come over it just like a popper. How you want to fish this thing? You want to cast it out there, pop it. I usually let that water span over and then let it pan out, let it settle, and then pop it again. That really creates that reaction strike, knows that that lets the bass know that that frog is up there and it's present. The Z-Man popping frog. These legs come already pre-cut, although you may want to chop off a little more because they are a little long. Another tip while you're frog fishing, the top of the frog. There could be the fanciest, most colorful design on the top of the frog you'll ever see. It doesn't matter. The top of the frog does not matter when you're frog fishing because the bass, if you're looking up from the water above, they only see the frog that's above their head. They don't see the top. They see the bottom of this frog. So only the bottom color matters. The top does not matter. There's so many frog brands out there that I absolutely love, and I only reviewed a few today. Let me know if you guys want a part two to this video. But guys, the last one I want to review today is the Lunker Hunt frog. This is a different type of frog than we've been seeing about the hollow bodies, you know, with the skirted legs. But guys, this is the Lunker Hunt walking frog. Look at these legs. 
This is what I love about these frogs. They are so realistic. This literally is an exact replica of a frog. Look at this thing. These legs, just like that, look exactly like frog legs ready to hop along. But guys, what you do when you pop these frogs, these legs, they have this erratic action just like you're seeing right now. And uh, that's what I love. Again, these, these frogs are very soft. So when the bass blow up on it, look, boom, hooks are ready to go, ready for that hook set. There are other great frog brands out there. For example, Zoom has a frog, Spro has a frog, Bass Pro Shops brand frogs. Those are all my favorite. And I will do a part two to this video explaining more about frogs. Those are some of the brands that, you know, came to mind first that I want to explain to you guys. All right, now let's get into, you know, how you fish the frog. All right, so the setup I use for the frog, I have the Shimano Karado DC paired with 35 pound braid, 35 pound spider wire to be specific with a 7.6 John B rigged rod. The John B 7.6 rigged rod is heavy, of course. You wanna have a heavy frog rod when you're ripping it through vegetation and mats. This will allow you to get that frog out to the maximum distance possible. Paired with the Corrado, it is absolutely magical. All right, so how do you actually fish frogs? There's three types of way I like to do it. Fast, medium, and slow. So if we're gonna talk about fast first, when I'm talking about fast frog fishing, what you wanna do, cast it out, let that frog hit the water. If you don't get that initial reaction strike, reaction strike, you wanna go to the fast method. What I like to do, literally pop your rod tip and reel at the same time. Pop your rod tip and reel, pop your rod tip and reel. This frog will have erratic action. It'll go up and down, it'll go side to side and getting that reaction strike from these bass, it's essential. So how do you fish fast? You wanna cast it out, reel, pop your rod tip, reel and pop your rod tip. A nice steady reel, pop your rod tip. It's a nice quick action and a great reaction strike from those bass will occur. All right guys, the second way I like to fish the frog is with a medium kind of speed action. What I like to do, again, cast that frog out, let it hit the water, always wait for that initial reaction strike. It's phenomenal when that frog hits the water and the bass comes up. But guys, what you wanna do to fish medium, what I like to do, and before I say this, you know, these three types of methods I like to show, I utilize all three of them. There's not a really specific condition I like to throw each in them, but you know, I kind of like to experiment. There's some I like to, and I'll explain that later, but I kind of experiment with all three, see what works. Anyway, with the medium speed, I cast it out. What I like to do is twitch, 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 twitch. Three twitches, let that frog pause. Let it pause for two to three seconds, and then twitch, 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 twitch it again, three to four times. Let that frog pan out, pause two to three seconds. Twitch, 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 and com completely repeat that motion, and that's how I fish that frog in the medium action. The next way I like to fish the frog is slow. Um, as I said before, I like to fish the frog slow in different conditions. I mainly like to fish it when it's hot out. You know, those bass are lethargic. They may be looking for something on the top. You never know, but if you want to experiment, fish the frog slow when it's hot, especially in those summer days. What you want to do with the frog, I let it cast out, of course, look for that initial reaction strike. But what I like to do, let that frog pause for four to five seconds, then twitch it once or twice and then let it pause again for four to five seconds. You wanna fish this way slower than the medium, giving it one to two twitches and then pause out for four to five seconds. This is how you fish the frog slow. So if I had to break down, you know, when, when am I gonna fish fast? When I'm gonna fish medium? When am I gonna fish slow? Of course, you always wanna try out all of them. You wanna experiment, that's it fishing. You know, you wanna experiment what works, what types of frogs work, what type of speed. In the early morning, I like to fish fast. Um, the reason for this is it's still cooler in the morning, you know, when the sun hasn't rose, it's not that hot. Bass are aggressive. They're looking to feed for the day. Fish it fast. You know, in that 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock range, you know, it's getting hotter. Sun's coming up. You know, everything's starting to be alive. I kind of fish that frog medium. And then when it's super hot, I love to fish that frog slow. But again, some of these may not work at all times, which is why you have to experiment. So when do I like fishing the frog? I like fishing it early morning or late at night, dawn or dusk. Those are the best times by far to fish the frog. Now, what I like to do, um, utilize that early morning, you know, that period from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m., 5, 5 a.m. to even 9 a.m. could be a great span in the morning. And then that period from 5 o'clock at night, you know, to 9 o'clock at night or whenever it gets dark, whatever the time zone is you're in. The reason why I don't like to fish the frog in the middle of the day, these bass are lethargic if it's hot out, you know, they're most likely not going to go after a topwater bait and you want to sink to lower 
water column levels, but the morning and the night, phenomenal times for frog fishing. All right, so where do you want to fish frogs? You want to look for aquatic vegetation, other plants or weeds, and overall structure. What I mean by aquatic vegetation, you want to look for lily pads. You want to look for algae or weeds on the top of the water. You want to look for any other disgusting, you know, weed or plant that you see in the pond. You want to drag this frog over these different kinds of thick vegetation or mats. These bats are hiding under and frogs, their natural habitat is to live in these things and camouflage themselves. So if they see a top water movement over these things, they're going to suspect it's a frog giving itself away. And the bass love to chomp these things off of this aquatic vegetation. If you have a pond and there is weeds on the edge of a bank, you want to utilize them. What you want to do, you want to cast this frog parallel to those weeds and bring it along. Frogs love to hide in these reeds, you know, bury themselves, camouflage themselves, use it for protection or even shade. And if you cast them parallel to these reeds and bring it across them, huge reaction strike from those bass. I've caught in tons and tons of fish on frogs from those reeds. Next tip, utilize structure. If there's a fallen tree in the water, cast that frog on land or bring it by the edge of that tree. It'll act like this frog is trying to escape and the bass will again have that reaction strike and grab that frog off the top. Before I forget another big tip with frog fishing, what you want to do, you don't want to cast it, the frog, ultimately in open water and let that big splash happen unless it's required. Unless you know you're on the bank and you're fishing into an open body of water and there's structure out there, that's a totally, totally fine. But if you are on a bank and you are casting parallel to another bank, what you want to do, you want to cast that frog on land. Another example of this is you're in a boat and you're casting to the land. You want to cast this frog not in the water but on the land and then slowly trickle it off the land and have it plop in the water. You'll get that reaction strike and it'll not scare those bass away. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I just skimmed the near surface of frog fishing. There is such a science, such an art to frog fishing, and I skimmed literally the surface of this. There's so much more we could dive deeper into, and I will make a part two to this video. I talked to you guys about some of my favorite brands of frogs and types of frogs. I also told you how to fish frogs, what I use to fish frogs, times of day I like to fish frogs, different methods, you know, all of the above. And it was really, really great information that I hope you guys utilize and go catch some more fish on the water. Again, we only skim the surface. I'll definitely make a part two and explain way more about frog fishing and take it down to more of a science. As I'm telling you, utilize these tips. You will catch more and bigger bass out on the water. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment down below. Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Zuggy Fishing. Guys, let's hit 10,000 subscribers. That would be so, so cool. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be positive, just fish.